one. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to Sabbath School, where this morning we will be studying the Old Testament hope. Uh, it's fourth lesson in our new quarter, so we're very excited to dive into this the Sabbath. Uh, but before we get started, we will have a testimony by one of our new panel members, Sister Naomi. Hello. Um, my testimony is that I've been praying a while for a check to come into the mail, and it has gone through a lot of ups and downs, and I've just been praying that God protect it and get it to me whenever that time is. Um, and it finally came in the mail. So I'm praising God for um, that. Amen. Amen. Uh, and we definitely love praise reports um, as things are happening. And also we love to pray for you and for anything that's happening. So we will now take this time to um, go through some prayer requests that we may have out there. So does anyone on our panel have prayer requests? Yeah, I want to continue to pray for... Um, my next door neighbor, as uh, she's recently come home from uh, rehab, uh, but she's just she's just having a hard time, you know, readjusting back to being in the house um, independently again. So just pray for her and her family. And you know, I appreciate your testimony, Naomi, because it reminds me that you know that check was never lost, right? The Lord mm -hmm. always knew where it was, mm -hmm. and you know. You are blessed to be able to keep bringing it to him, but it's easy, I think, for us to hold on to our uh, our anxiety about where it is and when it's mm -hmm. going to get there. When all along, the Lord knew where it was and the mm -hmm. right time to for you to get it. So, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. we had a praise report last week at church where um, one of the sisters at church said she had gotten a large bill, mm. and she was she's like, I don't know, Lord you're going to have to take care of this because I don't know where the money is going to come from. And the next day she got a check in the mail that covered the bill and left a little bit of extra. Wow. And so she was like, you know, God had already, he had known the bill was coming to have the check headed her way so that she didn't have to wor worry for an entire day. And she had extra on it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and that one stuck with me through the week. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, prayers for um, one of the sisters at one of our churches who lost her son. I know we heard about that earlier today. Um, mm. And then for the Bonner family, which oh, they also go to another church, um, Brother Bonner lost his wife. So, okay. <laughs> Excuse me. And I just want to continue to pray for those. Um, in different places in the world, especially mm -hmm. Russia and Ukraine, as they are having, you know, we don't hear, at least I don't hear that much on the news anymore, but I know that their situation is not resolved. So, mm -hmm. so the Lord um, continues to uh, be with the people over there and give them the courage they need and that mm -hmm. the leaders make some better choices. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I'll ask for a prayer for my family, my mom and family. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. If we don't have any other prayer requests, we will ask Sister Lindsay to pray for our prayer request and to open Sabbath school. Sure. Dear Lord and Hannah, we thank you so much for taking care of us, Lord, for um, seeing the details of our lives and uh, for promising to care for us. Thank you that Naomi has gotten this. Uh, check that she's been waiting for lord um we also ask that you are with um, the families that have experienced loss and um also those that are transitioning lord we ask that you are with our brothers and sisters in different churches and different places in the world lord we ask that you uh continue to sustain them and that they're able to see your love and your power even in rough situations Lord, we ask that you are with our world leaders, Lord, that um, you might give them wisdom and clarity of mind. And also during this time, as we are opening your word to learn more about you, Lord, we just ask that you um, take away the distractions that keep us from um, knowing you better, Lord, and that we um, 
take this time to learn of you. And we ask it in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that prayer. And we will jump right into our lesson. As I mentioned earlier, is the Old Testament hope. And, you know, this, this quarter has been talking a lot about death and what happens after death and, you know, the, the misconceptions about that. And so it's good to have hope in the resurrection. Um, and so we'll look at where some of that hope is, you know, a lot of this it talks about, you know, I always talk about the Sabbath lesson and talks about like the mystery of life and um, how the earth kind of came from nothing. What does that final resurrection look like? So let's hop right into it. And we're going to talk about one of our old friends that we've talked about quite a few times through as we've been studying on the Sabbath school ministry, our good friend, Job. So let's read Job chapter 19, verses 25 through 27. You said Job what? 25, 19, verses 25 through 27. Okay. I have it. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Okay, so at this point, Job had been through quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. We know the story that, you know, but there's a lot of things that he, he didn't do anything. Like he was faithful to God, got caught up in this like cosmic conflict um, of good versus evil and lost his family, lost his cattle, lost his wealth. All he had pretty much was his life and his wife. Mm -hmm. time. And um, even his wife was like, why don't you just curse God and die? His friends weren't that great of friends um, and keeping him motivated. And he, here we see that he is looking towards something. Why was he so determined in this, this resurrection? And how did, how did he think he would see God? Like what was his hope? In it says, in my flesh shall I see God. And I hadn't picked up on that before, but it really seems like it's very clear. He doesn't want to see him in spirit, you know, or separated from his body. No, he wants to see him in my flesh, you know. Um, yeah and when you look at um john chapter 118 i was trying to get to that it says no one has seen god at any time the only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father he has declared him so in hearing that and seeing that Job wants to see God, like he's like, even after the worms have eaten away at me, like long after I'm gone, mm -hmm. I know that I want to see God. So what is this kind of foretelling us? Like what's, what's happening here? And why did Job have this type of hope that he would see God? Mm -hmm. It is distinctly a hope, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think Job was friends with God. You know, um, mm -hmm. I've, I've heard people say before, you know, that they can't be sure um, if they're saved or not. Um, mm -hmm. But as you say that, it, it makes it clear that he was he was confident of of his faith and what he was having his hope in mm -hmm. um which is mm -hmm. i think important for all of us to have i mean it's almost like that's all he had left at this point literally, literally. you know even having nothing else mm -hmm. he was still saying but i'm i'm even though I have nothing, even though everything's been taken away from me, mm -hmm. even after I'm long dead, because at that point he thought he was going to die. Mm -hmm. um, even after I'm long dead, I'm gone. I know that I have this hope that I will see God in my flesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this, 
he has this hope after having doing nothing to to really bring on his circumstances and in the crucible we kind of talked about like being in different circumstances and dealing with that crucible and he definitely dealt with a huge crucible here yet he still is has his eyes on god what can be taken away from this as we witness the unfairness around us you know things happen day by day lindsay was um, ask for prayers for Ukraine and Russia. So there's people who are in that conflict, mm-hmm. um, which is a physical conflict that had nothing to do with the decisions that were made there. Uh, mm-hmm. speak, like the martial law that was put into place and people are, you know, there's fear there. How do we kind of navigate through life in this time using Job as an example or what he was looking at as an example? Yeah, I would say that even though he was going through this tough time, he didn't stop talking to God. Mm -hmm. He didn't stop talking, even in his frustration, even if he, all he had to say was he was frustrated. He was still talking to God and still praying to God. So, I mean, that's one way how we can continue to trust God and lean on him um, through all the unfairness and things that we go through in this life. It almost seems like the worse his life became, the more he looked forward to just being with God. Mm. You know, in the in the very worst, like, okay, well, I have nothing left in this world. You know, my wealth is gone, my children are gone. Mm-hmm. My health is gone. I'm looking forward to seeing God. Mm-hmm. I just want to see God. Um, and sometimes it seems like either, you know, we come to hard times, it either drives us closer or drives us away from God. But, you know, I pray that in, in the tough times, you know, that I'll face in the future, whatever they might be, that I'll grow closer to God that I'll have a deeper desire for him um Mm -hmm. even in the the worst of it Mm -hmm. which I guess begins now with um taking our time to build that uh foundation Mm -hmm. with him trusting him with the small things and Job said something powerful he said um in 1925 I know that my redeemer lives Mm -hmm. and even in knowing that how should that shape like how we move day to day because do we always I don't think like just thinking about it that's not something we act like at all times that we know that our redeemer lives like there's so many times where we doubt or just it just becomes a something that's in our minds but not we don't act like that like you know when you try to get a good example um, when your parents, like when you're as a child and the child knows their parents are there and they're safe, they, they move with a different confidence mm. than when they're kind of by themselves and they're unsure and they're That's like, who's watching me? Mm-hmm. You know, if I was in trouble, where do I run? And so like having that, that surety, that confidence, a lot of times we could move and act differently in how we do, or like, um, to take it to a Dave Ramsey financial peace um, realm. He always says that when you have paid off all your debts, when you saved your emergency fund money and you go to work and you're like, you know what? I think I've had enough of this. And they go, where are you going? He's like, home. He's like, why? Because I don't have any bills. You know, it's just, and you don't have to do that, but that's just like the confidence of moving differently. So in knowing mm-hmm. everything we live, how should we, act differently, move differently, live differently. You know, when you, when you say it like that, it kind of puts things in perspective as far as um, we get stressed out and we get worried about things that we don't need to, Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. So this evening, my daughter is four. And we went out to a restaurant. It's like her favorite restaurant. She got to eat like her favorite things. She went, um, we went on a nice walk and we had 
had a nice lunch and we spent time doing lots of things that she enjoyed doing. And then when we were at the restaurant, she got a balloon and the balloon popped. Um, well, one popped in the restaurant and then on our way out, we had gotten her second one and that one popped too. Mm -hmm. And I told her, we're not going back in the restaurant. It's late. We're not, we're not going back in. And, um, so she is in her car seat and she's crying like the whole world has ended. And she says, this was the worst day of my life. Whereas literally just moments ago, she says, this is the best. This is great. You know? And I think when, when you look at a kid, you can say, like literally everything else went well for you today. Mm -hmm. Your balloon popped at the very end of the day. Mm -hmm. But yet, I guess we do it in our own way. You know, mm -hmm. we might, you know, the Lord is providing this for us, this for this. He's directing our paths. We see, you know, how he's, he's working in our lives. And then something happens and we're just like the whole world. It's it. That's it. We're yeah. done. Um, yeah. And I think I've said this before, but yet, I mean, I still do it, you know, <laughs> just put way too much weight in things that are not great in the whole scheme of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Almost to that, reminding ourselves of how he has worked in the past and yes. maybe journaling that to further emphasize it in our minds because sometimes we're visual people and just like experiencing things sometimes we forget and we forget until I mean we're reminded and sometimes that reminder could be through journaling um, about yeah. the good things he has done so that we can look back on them yes and I think it's a blessing even you know to study the bible to study the lesson together and be reminded you know, as I hear your testimony, it can inspire mm -hmm. me. And um, if we share it with the internet, it can encourage other people. And that's one way that sometimes we might not be connected to people that we can share spiritual things with. So you're right, journaling is um, it's a blessing too. And then you can look back because I personally, I forget things um, really quickly. I mean, a year or two ago, it's nice to look at those things, but I've forgotten it way before then. Like sometimes I'll read things I've journaled and be like, did I write this? I really, I don't remember this at all. Like there's not any remembrance. Mm -hmm. um, the Lord is patient. He still continues to uh, bless me. <laughs> and I think taking the time to just stop and take in what's around you as well. Also jogs your memory. Mm -hmm. you know a lot of time we're a lot of times we're moving so quickly and we're going here going there and we don't just stop and breathe to allow our brains to even rest enough to remember mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so let's move on as we're going to read uh head over to psalm chapter 49 and let's read verses 6 through 15 This Psalm 49, verses 6 through 15. Okay, I have it. And that was 6 through 15? Yes. Verses? Okay. Those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their souls is costly and it shall cease forever that he should continue to live eternally and not see the pit for he sees why for he sees wise men die likewise the fool and the senseless person perish and leave their wealth to others their inner thought is that their houses will last forever their dwelling places to all generations, and they call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man 
though in honor does not remain. He is like the beasts that perish. This is the way of those who are foolish and of their posterity who approve their sayings. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. The upright shall have dominion over them in the morning and their beauty shall be consumed in the grave far from their dwelling. But God will re redeem my soul from the power of the grave for he shall receive me. So in looking at this, how does the psalmist contrast what will happen to those who with assurance and those who perish without it, who are pretty much dependent on themselves? Mm. I kind of see that those who are dependent on themselves, everything down to beauty, um, everything of theirs will fade, will pass away, will never come back again. Um, and those who are trusting in God, their soul will be redeemed um, and that will last eternity. Hmm. And so in looking at these two groups, how this, because obviously this was a while ago, um, this was <laughs> yesterday, how do we see that? Because like, as you said, there's like the, the, the group that rely on their own wealth and their own beauty, um, who have a different end than those who rely fully on God. What are some examples of how we still see this and how do we not fall into the trap of one of being in the one we don't want to be in? I mean, I think all of us in um, the most obvious way is I think with our jobs, right? Mm. Um, the fact that um, I think sometimes we give ourselves um, the extra pressure, but also we have a certain amount of pride. You know, I can do this. I can do that. You know, that's how I, you know, I, I make all this money because of what I'm doing. But the thing is, is that we can't do anything without the Lord. And um, I think when we see, when we really take pause and take time to see the Lord working mm -hmm. um, and not just ourselves, um, it's humbling, but I think even more than that, it gives you peace because you're, you're not having to solve all the problems. You're not having to, you know, be the best or know the next step, but that you can trust that he is directing it mm -hmm. for you. Not that you don't sit back or you don't go to work, but you know, that the Lord is giving you the ability to do the things that you do. That was actually my next question is, do we not like strive for the accomplishment, strive for the wealth, strive for, you know, being our best? Mm -hmm. Is that what this is saying? But you kind of answer that a little bit. We want to dig deeper into that though, by all means. I was just, you know, digging behind what you were going to say next. <laughs> no, I think, um, yeah, it's easy for us. And it doesn't matter what your job is. I mean, you can be doing the humblest of jobs, yet if you are, um, you are taking on that uh, responsibility without um, submitting it to the Lord first, we can all fall into the, the pit of um, pride and also of uh, carrying that burden, they go together. So you're saying that this, these two groups aren't necessarily about money or accomplishment in themselves. It's more about the spirit that you have. Yes. Either way. So the wealthy can be saved and the poor can be lost. Yes. Which is good news and bad news, you know, like, the Lord knows our hearts. I think we, yeah. we, um, we think about all these things. Um, and we see it differently than God sees it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's important to, to understand because a lot of times we try to make 
these things very black and white or not black and white, but almost like a, um, a checklist mm-hmm. to say, mm-hmm. oh, you know, this says that the wealthy that, um, cause it says the wealthy that depend on their own beauty and, and accomplishments that they thought that was going to get them what they, where they need to go, um, would be in that one group and will forever vanish. And they go, oh, because he has money. He's, he's, you know, not going to make it. And it's, you know, I, you know, the che- it's not a, a straight checklist that's out there. It really mm-hmm. is what your what's in your heart and your soul. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think as I was thinking about it, that's why I think sometimes people are led into depression mm-hmm. or hopelessness is because they feel like, you know, maybe at one point they thought that they were the very best at something, or they thought that they had such and such a skills, and then something happened, and either they're not able to do that anymore, or they see, okay, well, other people can do that better than I can, mm. or I don't know what's going to happen next. You know, I lost my job. I don't know what's going to happen next, or I lost my family. I don't, I don't know how to deal with this. Mm. Uh, but it's hard for people to continue to trust, to move forward when they have only themselves to look to. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a greater burden than God wants us to have. He wants us to take his burden. You know, he says his, his burden is easy and his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's almost that we get dependent on what we see Mm -hmm. we get really dependent on what we can see when God is working in ways that we can't see Mm -hmm. and I recently have been through a I mean kind of a couple situations where I had to trust God in what he was doing and what I couldn't see even though it meant this wasn't my plan this plan didn't work this plan didn't work this plan didn't work but I had to just go back to the basics of I know he loves me I know that he wants to protect me I know that he wants good for me and remembering his promises um when I couldn't see where he was trying to take me when Mm -hmm. I couldn't see where he was trying to lead me to in that moment I just had to go back to his promises, which kind of goes back to reading the Bible and um, really trusting in those promises and look to him rather than looking around, look to him. (laughs) And, you know, now as you say that, it reminds me, you said the things that I can see. And that it reminds me of the text that talks about that's what faith is. It's the substance of things unseen, Mm -hmm. right? So as long as we can see what God is doing and what the next step should be and how things can be taken care of, our faith can't grow. Mm-hmm. We, it, it takes being in situations where we can't see the solution. We don't yeah. see that we're even on the right path for the solution. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how our, our faith can grow. Um, which is never comfortable because I, I mean, I would like to see, you know, my yeah. steps like a five-year plan, but the Lord, does, he doesn't, he doesn't send those out. Not even and with all the technology there is. And it's interesting because when you look at Job, we just talked about like, that was completely unseen. Like he didn't see the bad or the good coming. And yeah. I think that is so true that we don't know what's going to happen when, and there's, I know I'm one of those impatient people to Lindsay. I'm like, I want to know what's going to happen next. And my dear husband reminds me, he's like, why, why do you need to know? Like, that's not for you to know. I was like, yeah, you're right. He's like, and if you knew you would probably mess it up. So just deal with it. Thanks for that vote of confidence (laughs) over there. Because we tried to go ahead of God. Like if God says, Abraham did it. Um, God says, I'm going to bless you with these things. We're always looking like, when is that going to happen? How is it going to happen? Is this the way it's going to do it? Well, this has to be my 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 plan. Like this has to be how it's going to happen. So I'm going to force this to go through. Um, when God's like, no, that's not actually what I wanted. I want it to be over here and this will be higher up here. But you just force another way because you knew too much. So 
Mm -hmm. But you know, over and over again, we, we, we should know this because we look at, for example, how um, when the children of Israel were to cross, I think it was, I don't remember which sea, but going into the promised land and the priests were carrying the, the Ark of the Covenant and God oh. said, okay, when the priest's feet touch the water, that's when he was going to work a miracle that's when it was going to be split mm. or like when he told the the 10 lepers when jesus told the 10 lepers go to the priests and, and show yourself to the priests they weren't well at that time mm -hmm. they weren't even a little bit well they were they weren't feeling better mm -hmm. there was mm -hmm. no good warm fuzzy feeling um no physical manifestation they they literally had to go on faith before there was any um there was any change mm -hmm. and so let's look at uh david because mm -hmm. he also had something to say about this whole seeing god again uh, let's read psalm chapter 71 verses 17 through 21 Psalm 71 verses what? 17 through 21. Okay. Oh God, thou hast taught me from my youth and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also when I'm old and gray headed, oh God, forsake me not until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Thy righteousness also, O oh God, is very high. Who has done great things, O God? Who is like unto thee? Thou which has showed me great and sore troubles shall quicken me again and shall bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. So just like our friend Job, David also went through a lot. Mm -hmm. um, unlike Job, some of this was David's own doing uh, by mm -hmm. the decisions that he made. But here he's, you know, talking to God about the things that he trusted in from his youth. Um, let's say, because he further up, it talks about how God had pulled him from his mother's womb, how he taught him in his youth, um, and then he's shown him great and severe troubles, yet he's still saying, bring me up again from the depths of the earth. What does that mean? What was David talking about here? About me being, being brought up from the depths of the earth. Yes. Especially after he's gone through all of that, talking about like the God mm -hmm. of his youth and his entire life. So in the um in the lesson, it was saying like it could be partly figurative, but also, you know, a very literal um like resurrection. Mm. So I'll read verse 20 again. Thou which has showed me great and sore troubles shalt quicken me again and shall bring me up again from the depths of the earth. So it's definitely like a picture of, you know, being dead, but yet we trust that the Lord will, will bring us back in the resurrection. But I think also we're in the situation where he's done for, he should be finished. But yet God brings him out of it and um, gives him another chance mm -hmm. as well. I think it's interesting that he qualifi qualifies that at the beginning by saying, you who have shown me great and severe troubles shall revive me again. So he's saying that God is the one that's going to do this. Like mm -hmm. it's very direct because if you, for those who know the story of David, um, there was no mistaking who would bring him up from the depths of the earth. Mm -hmm. And so in the lesson, it says, um, in the end, what's important to grasp that whatever our situation, God is there. He cares and ultimately our hope isn't found in this life, but in the life to come, the eternal life we have in Jesus after our resurrection at his return. So that's one of the promises that we hold on to. And Naomi, I know you were talking about looking at the promises as we mm -hmm. go through tough times how can we have moments of encouragement like this that David had or like 
um, it's outlined here. Like, what are some of the things you hold on to as you navigate some of these tough times in life? Hmm. I think one thing um, that helps me is asking people to pray for me and knowing, like asking trusted people, of course, um, to pray for me. Um, it just helps me to feel that I'm not alone and I'm not praying by myself for these things. So that's kind of what I hold on to sometimes is having those people that circle the church family, um, friends that I know that have prayed for me before. Um, yeah, kind of entrusting them to pray and then continuing to pray. But that's like one thing. I think that definitely the prayer is a good thing. I think also some of the things we talked about earlier with the journaling and looking at that, but I think also the hope and looking at those who've gone before us, whether it's in the Bible, mm -hmm. whether it's people, other people's testimonies, um, shows the power of God outside of our small circumstance. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we get wrapped up in just our own, what's happening with us or what's happening with our friend group or our church group. And we don't see outside of that, mm -hmm. the larger picture of awesome things that God does um, and then to rejoice with others in their blessings. Mm -hmm. Go for it, Lindsay. I, I was just going to say, I feel like all these things that we're talking about, like you can see it so clearly in children. And yet when I'm an adult and I, you know, you'd like to think that you've grown past that and you can see the, the bigger picture better and everything. And yeah. yet. No, we just have different issues, you know, maybe they're like spaced out in time, like a little bit longer, but it's, it's all the same issues. Mm -hmm. And I think the difference between us as adults and children is that we actually have the experiences to get us beyond that. Yeah. And, we don't, and a lot, a lot of us, what I said earlier, we don't stop. Mm -hmm. We don't stop to realize that we, as adults, we have families to take care of. So we are, we're, parents but we're also children and we're also aunts and uncles and but we're also nieces and nephews we are mm -hmm. employees and employers um we're taking care of people and also being taken care of at the same time mm -hmm. so we have a lot of different hats that we wear and that doesn't allow us to stop so we're church leaders we are school leaders we are leaders in the workplace um we're being we're volunteering at our kids schools um so it's so many different ways that we're being pulled that the amount of time that we even study is full. It's not just time to sit and reflect. And so we don't get to see these things. So it's a, a lot, a lot of times if we stopped and looked at our own self for five minutes, we would go, oh, wow, I can't believe I'm behaving in this way, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we don't, we never stop to reflect on that. Mm -hmm. I feel like I need to put that in my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> to stop <laughs> yeah <laughs> I am finding the importance in that day by day mm -hmm. let your brain just it's amazing the things that God will put in your brain when you're not thinking mm -hmm. yeah right. and I think like the, in this society more than ever before uh, there is not there's not like Think of it back in the day, you know, people would have to get from point A to point B. They'd be walking for long distances, you know, or they'd have to wait for something. They'd have to just sit and wait. But now if we're sitting and waiting anywhere, we're reading something on our phone, checking our email, mm -hmm. sending a text, like there's always some way to be doing something. We don't have that time where we have to just sit and wait, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so we're not good at it. And I was going to say, sometimes it almost feels bad to be sitting and waiting as in like, what should, what am I not doing right now? Like I should be doing something. I should be doing something or I, what am I not doing that I need to do? Like our brain is just constantly like 
going and like you're saying like stopping and taking that time is really beneficial I just think about like movies where you see people who live in the country and they like come home at the end of their day and they might read the newspaper they have it there but then they just fold it up and put it on the side and they're just sitting on the porch yeah where are those people? In movies. In movies. Oh, oh right. They're in movies. Mom but you sick. think about it, and it's normally like set, you know, 40 or 50 years ago. Um, but they just sit. Like they're mm -hmm. at the front porch, the sun is going down, and they're just kind of reflecting. And I think that's where we see the goodness of God, because then you see the beauty of the sky. You see the beauty yeah. of the land. You enjoy your home and the blessings that come with being at that home. Um you know, it's not that we walk in every time we see, we're like, oh, I got to wash the dishes. Oh, I had need to sweep. Oh, mm -hmm. I get in the yard and do this or pull weeds. You know, they just get to sit and enjoy the children, even running around and playing, mm -hmm. um, enjoy the breeze. So I think we have done ourselves a disservice by becoming so busy. Mm -hmm. Even when we're doing nothing, like you said, Lindsay, we're busy. Even when we're sitting and not reading our phones, our brains are going at the speed as if we were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thinking, okay, I need to send this email and um, I got a message from so-and-so. I need to check that. Even though, yeah, it might not even be in our hands, but we, it's yeah. the norm now too. When you had to write a letter and wait a week for it, imagine <laughs> waiting a week for a response on something. Yeah. Ooh. Or someone can only call you if you were at home. Yes. Yes. And you have to leave a message if you're not at home. Sometimes or, I wish I could go back. <laughs> days. Yeah. Or you had to see people in person. You That's couldn't. true. I think we fast track this technology, like the separation from people um, since the, the pandemic. And then, yeah, we, yeah, we don't even have to go somewhere to be very connected with a lot of people. Which means that we're not really connected because you don't get to, like, I know coworkers, I have coworkers that I've been working with for two and a half years. And I have no idea how tall they are. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. wow. I've never seen them in person. Yeah. So it's, you know, you think you know someone, but it's a false sense of security. And I think that is something that goes through these lessons. Like, as we talked about the two groups, there's a, the the group who depended on their wealth, that was a false sense of security. Mm -hmm. They felt like they had everything they needed. They didn't need anything else. Um, so they were fine with it. And it wasn't that all the time, well, some of them were, but not at, not at all times is it that they're replacing God with the money. Mm -hmm. it's that they don't know they need God because they have the money. Mm -hmm. Can you say that again? So it's not that they're they're replacing God with the money, is that they don't know they need God because of the money. So when you're comfortable, when everything is going great, you don't need to find something to hold on to. Mm. Because there's nothing that's pulling at you. There's nothing to say, I need help. There's nothing to that is triggering you to feel pain. Or because a lot of times when we feel pain, then we're like, okay, God, please help me. But if they don't feel like they ever need help with anything, their question is, why do I need God? And they do. But most of the times people don't bring God to them because they feel like there's nothing that they can. It's an easy win when someone is hurting or in pain or needs a meal to then introduce God to them. But when someone's just comfortable, they're living life, everything's going great. How do we introduce God to that person? Mm. That's a good question. And I think that's a challenge for all of us mm -hmm. um, when it comes to witnessing is how do you introduce God and the gospel and that Jesus can save them when they don't feel like they're lost? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think it comes down to, you know, the Holy Spirit leading people to, to understand these things because you know, we've been, I've been, uh, I've been talking with my kids about, you know, telling people about Jesus. Well, how do we do that? Like that person, they, maybe they don't know. Should I just go tell them? But it, it's more complicated, you know, 
because people aren't always ready and we don't always know the timing, but we can pray and we can ask the Lord's leading. Mm -hmm. And um, there are times I think when people, I think every person, you know, there's, there's times when they are open um, to hearing and to knowing Mm -hmm. uh, about a God that, that cares for them and, Mm -hmm. and and loves them. Um, So yeah, because I think sometimes we might look at someone and say, oh, well, they're not interested. Mm-hmm. You know, they already have all these things. They don't, they're not going to know they need God. But the yeah. truth is, we don't know. We don't know the right timing. We can pray that the Lord leads us to the right people at the right time. Mm-hmm. And just because someone looks like they that they don't need God doesn't mean they don't. Yeah. Just because mm-hmm. it looks like they have it all doesn't mean that that there's not that hole that needs to right. be filled because you know god the the need that we have for god can't be filled with money Mm -hmm. exactly it can for i guess a short time but not they're gonna still be empty sorry go ahead naomi okay um and it kind of what i'm hearing it goes back to our relationship with god to Mm -hmm. and building that in order to trust to know where he's leading us to share him. So it's kind of like you're building on that relationship with God to know his voice, to know where he's leading you, who he's leading you to. And then even praying for a door to open to share God. We have to be in tune with him to know that it's God, you know, opening that door making that opportunity for us to share so I'm kind of just hearing it's kind of going back to our relationship with God um, and then that flows out us sharing who God is yeah and so let's look at two other groups that Isaiah talked about because I think this is important as well Um, so I'm going to read Isaiah 26 I'm going to read verse 14 and then 19 verse 14 14 says they are dead they will not live they are deceased they will not rise therefore you have punished and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish and then verse 19 says your dead shall live together with my dead body they shall arise awake and sing you who dwell in the dust for your dew is like the dew of herbs and the earth shall cast out the dead so it talks about two different this two different sets of dead people, essentially. Um, what are those, what are the difference between them and why are there two groups? Which was the first verse you read? I just read verse nine, 26 verse 19. And the first and one four, you read was what? 14 was 26 verse 14. 14. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, it seems like the first group, verse 14, are those that are um, deceased and they stay deceased. Um, Everything is wiped from their memory. And then verse 19, um, it seems like they're talking about the dead man shall live together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for the dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. So one will remain um, dead, and then verse 19 is talking about awaking and singing, you know, um, like death can't can't hold you when you know the Lord. Mm-hmm. And I think that is very true i think that's what part of what gives us our hope is that you know if we know the lord no matter when we fall asleep that's our hope of the next thing to see Mm -hmm. um and so living that that righteous life now with the hope that what we have here is not what the end result is Mm -hmm. because imagine if we didn't have any hope any assurance any um reason to think that 
our lives go beyond death? How will we act differently? And this is kind of opposite to the question I asked earlier. Mm. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, if we didn't have like any hope, any assurance of what is going to happen after, if we thought that, you know, once once it's the end, it's the end, that's all we that happens. Mm. Um, how will we act differently? Like, why is that hope so important to us? Mm flourishing or even surviving day to day I think mean, what you said there is kind of um what I think of is we wouldn't see a point we wouldn't see a purpose we um yeah we wouldn't see a purpose so the way we live would change um in that way if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think people that don't that don't have a hope for another life, I think sometimes people just see it and, hey, you know, I'm going to try and get everything from this life I can. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to try and see everything I can see and do everything I can do and be the be the best, you know, basically just do the most for myself that I possibly can. And then they get through it and they're like, but why? It was all meaningless, you know, just like Solomon said. I mean, mm -hmm. he was one of the, the most, if not the most wealthy men in all of history. You know, he had everything that he wanted. He he could simply just obtain, you know, and they would, you know, they would get it for him. He had like a thousand women. He had all this wealth, you know, uh, and yet, at the end, he said, it's all vanity, you know? Mm -hmm. So even, um, even if people do feel like, oh yeah, I'm going to get, I'm going to get everything I've got, I can do it all at the end. It's still, it's, it's empty. Mm -hmm. What for? Mm -hmm. What for? Whereas, uh, the life we, we live here in this world, whether it's filled with good things or whether it's filled with bad things it's nothing compared to the hope that we have mm -hmm. and I think that hope takes us well beyond anything we can imagine on those mm -hmm. just feel like we can't move and, and when you look at those who don't have the hope you definitely see the difference in how they they behave um the whole YOLO generation you only live once um mm -hmm. being reckless with things you know all of that it stems from not having that assurance and that hope. Mm -hmm. And so let's look at one, another set of verses uh, in Daniel chapter 12. And it is Daniel chapter 12, verses one through four. Um, I can read. Okay. Um, Daniel chapter 12, one through four. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall, shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. So these verses talk about resurrection hope, mm -hmm. um, as Daniel also saw a lot in prophecy. What does it tell us about that hope in the resurrection, especially now? Mm -hmm. Which I'm sure everyone that reads this for the last however many years have also thought that that is now. Yeah. Yeah. Can you ask that again? Just saying, how does this uh these verses in chapter 12 what does that really tell us about the resurrection hope especially as we're dealing with life now hmm. 
So, but a lot of this is based on prophecy. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel was, he had gone through all the prophecies and this is at the end of, um, of his prophecies as the, the book is coming to a close. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think we have, at least it seems clear to me that there are, there's the, the two different um, resurrections and that the, the choices that we make here on earth do make a lasting impact. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's easy to think that what we're doing one way or another doesn't make a big difference in the whole scheme of things, but it really does. Mm -hmm. um, because you have two groups of people, those that shine as the brightness and um, those that uh, awake to everlasting shame and contempt, to shame and everlasting contempt, yeah. Um, and verse, chat, verse four is interesting. Daniel shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. So I know Crystal said that everyone's been thinking it's them, but we're going to say that's us. And um, many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Um, so regardless of all the things that people learn and the advancements we make in technology and in science, mm -hmm. it's predicted. And yet at the same time, mm -hmm. it's, it's not, it's not going to bring you closer one way or another. Mm -hmm. It's given people opportunities in all of history and i think that when you look at this as we as i was joking like everyone thought this was their end um it really is everyone's end mm -hmm. because when what we've learned this thus far in this this quarter is that when you stop breathing it is your end mm -hmm. and if you live long enough from the time you're born until the time of your end things change mm -hmm. and it's never for the best. I mean, there's good things that happen, but you see society degrading until mm -hmm. you're end. Um, so I, I think that having that hope and seeing that in the prophecy, it does speak to each one of us because at some point we have a beginning and an end. And when we're dead, we, we will know nothing else that happened. Mm -hmm. And so as we um, wrap up, uh, one thing is, uh, uh, Daniel, before we have a wrap up question, Daniel chapter 12, verse 13 says, but you go your way till the end for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. I think that kind of goes along with what I just said. He even told Daniel, okay, you've done all of this. Don't, don't be stressed out about it. You're going to go rest. I'm, you're going to go to sleep mm -hmm. and at the right time you will arise to your inheritance. And I think we, that's a hope that we all can hold on to, yeah. um, that as we're going through this and we see things going awry, we see things going this way or that way, at some point we will get to rest. And as long as we're faithful in our walk, as long as we're keeping that hope, just like Job, just like David, just like Daniel, um, when it's time comes for resurrection, we will wake, await to our inheritance. Mm -hmm. So the wrap-up question is, how does the biblical view of the resurrection give us a different outlook on death and despair, despair and on life and rejuvenation? It's a completely different, it's a completely different view. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I've heard people say that it's hard to I to believe that your loved one is not in heaven looking down on you mm -hmm. um, or or whatever the case may be. But I mean, honestly, in life, in the most difficult times, the thing that I want the most is rest, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes it's not even just sleep, but it's 
it's peace. And it's just not thinking about all the things that are going on in this Mm -hmm. world. And I think that it really is the most merciful and loving and fair thing that God can do Mm -hmm. to just say, at the end of whatever life has handed you, you just rest and you mm-hmm. just wait. Because sitting up on a cloud, watching all the chaos that is this world. That's mm-hmm. stress. That's not rest. No, it's I not rest. Stress. And imagine you look down and you see, you know, your children's poor choices or people hurting your child. Like, I wouldn't want to be up there seeing all of that. Mm-hmm. There'd be no peace. There'd be no rest that way. Mm-hmm. So. I think that the the fact that the Lord, he, um, I think his way is the most fair. And sometimes there'll be things that I come across and I don't understand them, but it, it comes back to the same idea that if we trust that God is love and that he is all knowing, we can trust our future with him mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. in whatever ways, um, and times he chooses to uh, teach us and grow us and then have us wait. We can trust him. Amen. Anything yeah. from you, Naomi, as we wrap up or we're good to? Um, no, I'm okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you both for participating in our lesson this week. This has been a, a definitely a good one. Um, and looking at that hope, and I think as we talk more about death and what that looks like, um, this will be awesome to hold on to mm-hmm. when it comes to comforting others or even life ourselves. So. Mm-hmm. And I will ask Sister Naomi to close us in prayer. Yes. Um, dear Jesus. Thank you so much for um, the Sabbath School panel. Thank you so much for this platform that we can um, share your word and inspired word um, through technology. I pray that um, this lesson comes to um, those that need it most and please touch the hearts of those that are listening um, and watching. Um, And I also, Um, pray that you please um, help each of us in our relationships with you help our focus to be on you even in our tough situations Um, and please help us to also grow our relationships so that we can share you with others as well Um, and help other people to have hope and help other people to know you better Um, Please guide us through the rest of this week. um, And I pray that you please um, continue to help us have hope. And I pray all of this that your will be done in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that closing prayer. And thank you all for joining us this Sabbath. Please join us next week as we continue our studies with resurrections before the cross. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the lesson and we hope you have a wonderful Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Bye. See you next Amen. Bye.